Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, okay. Uh, we welcome uh, Kulachi Hansraj Model School students for this virtual visit to the uh, LHC cavern where CMS experiment is being located. Mm -hmm. So today in this visit, we are going to see the different uh, sections of the experiment. And this section corresponds to the service cavern, experimental cavern, as well as on the surface. Right now, we are sitting on the surface where experiment is being controlled and also we negotiate with the Large Hadron Collider team to for the beam and no beam sometime and also uh, for the start of the, of the run. So I would be speaking uh, in, uh, in Hindi as well as in English, but uh, depending upon your choice, whatever you, you feel better, uh, is the best way to communicate. Did I have just one yes. one technical comment. Uh, unfortunately, I can't speak Hindi. <laughs> uh, oh, in my case, if you would like to talk to me, please use English. Uh, it is it is there is nothing behind it. It's yeah. just just that I don't don't understand so, Hindi. Uh, uh, so bid, uh, so uh, my my name is Ashok Kumar and uh, my name is Zoltan, Zoltan Zoltan Silashi and uh, we will be assisted by Noami. Yeah. When we will if she wouldn't the, hide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we will be three yeah. people. So you can see Noemi as well. So nope. we will thank you, Noemi. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so she's preparing the equipment to, to show us uh you know cavern, so service cavern as well as the experimental cavern. So we start the introduction by saying that we are right now in Geneva. <laughs> and <I'm> sorry. <laughs> and we are three hour and thirty minutes behind uh Indian uh, standard time ISD. Mm -hmm. And from 30 or 31st October, it will be 4 hour 30 minutes. So in winter, the difference is 4 hour 30 minutes. These days, it is uh, 3 hour 30 minutes. So it is exactly 12.30 or 12.35 in the evening. So uh, this point, which, you know, you the screen you may see, you may see a ring actually. So, well, first of all, you see you see the Geneva Basin. Ah, yeah. That's important. So that's, that's where we live. That's yeah. where we are, actually. In the background, you see the highest mountain of of Europe, Western indeed, Europe, Western yeah, Europe, yeah, Mont the Mont Blanc, and uh, this is uh, something like four thousand eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, four, four, yeah, four six one zero. Yeah, meter. Exactly. So uh, I know you have probably uh, half the Everest, huh? <laughs> exactly. So you you have much much higher, but actually that's what we have. <laughs> so so indeed that's the Mont, Mont Blanc and the the Alps, uh, in the foreground or in the middle you see the lake geneva you might see well something here that's uh geneva city what is important here is the runway of the of the geneva airport which is a couple of kilometers long so i think yeah. it's almost two or three kilometers rather yeah, three because it can it can accept uh, quite large air aircrafts as well so you can you might imagine that this is something like three kilometers and in the the foreground, you see the uh, the the well. What first of all, what you see here is this dashed line, is the border between uh, Switzerland and France, and we indeed even even our main compass, which is called CERN, Conseil European Recherche Nucléaire, or or today it is called Center for for the uh, European Maybe. Center for Nuclear Physics, the campus, even the campus is split into two between the two countries. But indeed, we are sitting on this yellow ring across the, the, the diameter of this yellow ring here, mm -hmm. deep in France. Like the deep means that's something like two kilometers from the border. We, we sit deep in France. Um, at this moment, and the, the the village that we oh that's what the village uh, that is nearby called Sassy, so that's this this small village here, and and that's why we always refer it as Sassy and CMS and Point Five and uh, we have several things. Uh, around the ring there are so the ring itself is the Large Hadron Collider. Yeah, you can. No, the point to this one is needed. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly. So this is the CMS point. Right now, me and Joltan are sitting here. Here. Mm -hmm. And you can see a Swiss and France border. Exactly. And this is exactly. a Swiss. So this is Lemon, Lake Lemon. 
by the way this alps alps uh, water from the alps is very famous all around the world and the, here is a place called avia mm -hmm. so avia water That's is very a, common in, in, and uh, there is a famous cricketer in india virat kohli who drinks the water from avia <laughs> oh a rich man <laughs> rich <indeed. laughs> anyway just to you know give you a feeling where are we right now so we are here actually cms experiment and we are on the surface right now and our target is to go inside inside uh into the tunnel and uh, show you the real cms experiment yes so that's that's the cross section yeah. what you see uh um that's what i showed towards so we are we are currently here yeah. on the top of the surface. top of this well on the surface yeah. and uh with noemi ashok will will descend in the underground caverns and we are lucky today as they can visit also the detector. It's not always the case. Yes. But now we are in a so-called technical stop, technical stop number two of this year, when we stop the accelerator for a for a short maintenance. Also, the experiments can go in for a short maintenance. And since both Ashok and Noemi have all the licenses that are required to go underground and go in the cavern. They, they will go in and they are so kind that they will take a camera as well. So uh, that's the teaser part. Um, uh, do we do you want to talk about why uh, do we have this this big toy? So uh, by the way, these are class ninth and uh, class uh, you know eight students. What we be. can what we can tell for sure that you very surely you have already heard about the Big Bang. Yeah. You heard about that this universe we are living in was, uh, well, um, actually, according, to the, according billion, to the science, this is exactly, exactly ago. it was created. It, 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 somehow it popped up, popped yeah. out from what we don't know, mm -hmm. but it popped up. And what we see today is a consequence of this popping up. We yeah. call it Big Bang. Um, I don't want to go in the religion part and how the Big Bang theory was made by a, by a, a Roman Catholic priest, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but but what is important that even though that physical world right after this Big Bang looked completely different from what we see today, that is a direct connection. So what? The, the physics is the same, and we want to know basically why we are here, what are we made of, what is our future. You know, this is the basic questions, and that's what we are trying to to figure out here. And also during your class syllabus, uh, students, you are now, you know, started hearing about uh, atoms, uh, electrons protons and neutrons inside the nuclei. So at CERN, what we normally uh, study is the composition of protons and neutrons, which means the quarks. So we try to collide protons and protons. This means we are colliding quarks inside the protons and at very, very high energy. Now, how to scale this energy on the, on the scale where we are dealing with energy in joules or calories, it is very small energy. But you go to very, very microscopic particles like a quark sitting inside the protons, the energy is very, very high. So one proton mass is roughly, you know, if you say in kilogram, it is roughly 1.67 into 10 to the minus 27 kilogram. But let us speak in energy units, it is around 1 GeV. And at what energy we are colliding is 14, roughly 14,000 GeV. So this is very, very high energy. So we have to take the protons. Yeah. Now, the question is, you know, to you students, for example, how do we get protons? So you remember hydrogen has a proton in the nucleus and a single electron in the orbit. So if you can pass this atom through very, very strong um, electromagnetic field and, you know, strip off the electrons, then you, in the hydrogen, you have only proton. There is no neutron in the, in the, in the, the nuclei of the hydrogen. This means you are basically taking the hydrogen nuclei. So you take a bottle of hydrogen gas and pass these um, atoms through the, the strong electromagnetic field, ex, you know, strip off the electrons with a very, very high, um, you know, electromagnetic field. You can chase and actually you can take out the 
negative electron uh, from the from the atom of the hydrogen and what is remaining is only the nucleus and in this nuclei only protons are there so these protons these protons are then you know collected in a bunches and pass through these uh, accelerator steps so this big ring which you have seen is one of the biggest accelerators we have it is 27 roughly 27 kilometer uh, around and why you need this round ring because you have to to get to 14000 gv energy you have to circulate or accelerate these particles many many times to reach that particular energy 14000 uh, uh, gv or so and at why we need this high energy because you want to create a new particles as in 2012 Higgs was created and discovered at a cms experiment as well as the other uh, twin experiment we call as the atlas experiment so those kind of new particles are created out of these very very high energies which are coming from these circular accelerators i just want to make one comment here uh you surely heard about this e equal mc square okay so this is this is the equation that tells that the mass and the energy are something very similar aspects of the same thing and they can transform from one to the other uh, by the the law of nature and this is what we are what we want to understand so we create uh, we create this as ashok told the protons with a very high energy about 14000 times that rest mass again mass and energy are equivalent so something like 14000 times uh, more than the rest mass and they smash them together and uh, since the protons are, are are compound particles they composite that in a there are some inner uh, 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 constituents actually these are usually the gluons but i do not want to go in that collide they create energy that the, 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 from the collision the energy is is made and this energy turns into matter, for example, the Higgs boson that Ashok has just told. And this is one of our work. Also, not only the Higgs boson that we are interested in, but I think you will talk about. What I would propose to Ashok now uh, is to change to the other camera. Um, I will pull the, the focus of this camera on myself only, uh, but I'm not, uh, not because I'm self selfish. I'm, of course, I am, but um, but I would let him to, to go around and I will just add his picture. Oh, sorry. That's water. Um, and then, then I just, uh, while they are, they are going on the ground, I keep their picture and I, I, I just would like to, to pop up the, the, the picture that, uh, I've already done. So this is what Ashok told about. We have several accelerators and the the proton beam starts from here actually now it is uh it is a quite an outdated picture now it we we had a uh a quite a, a, a renewing of the accelerator and this linux is now not linux 2 but linux 4 but the principle is the same so the proton beam start here from let me see yeah from from a gas bottle, the hydrogen, the hydrogen atoms are ionized. We have a, a giant, well, it's not too big, uh, a microwave oven, and this microwave uh, shakes off the electrons from the protons, the, from the hydrogen, and then the hydrogen, the, what remains is protons that we pull out from this, uh, this bottle, and then, then we start the journey. Um, the reason why we have, you see the first here, and then in this accelerator that is called proton synchrotron, then we inject in the super proton synchrotron, and then finally we get the protons to the, to the large accelerator. The reason why we have this is, is rather similar to why you have, for example, gears in your car. That is always an optimal, oh yeah, we lost them, but they will come back. Uh, that is an optimal torque of the of the the engine of the the, the car that where, where it works, you know, in an optimal range. 
And if you are outside of this optimal range, your car starts to, 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 to consume a lot, will not accelerate very well, and finally it will go wrong. That's the case with us. So we have several accelerators that are operating in different acceleration range. You can imagine that the proton starts from standstill in the, the beginning of the accelerator. Uh, its energy is very low. It obeys the, the normal, well, the normal, the classical physics uh, rules. But once it, it, it is accelerated in the PS, for example, 24 times its, uh, its rest mass, then it becomes relativistic, as we say. Then the, the physics a bit tweaked on it. That's something that actually part of the, the normal physics, but, but it starts to behave differently. And you need a different accelerator, a little bit different accelerator to deal with. Uh, we are lucky because if you see this year here, is uh, 1959, so we have this accelerator since quite a long. In the meantime, you see how Asha goes through the, the, the pad. And then, well, you know what? I stop my camera and I let Ashok to, to talk. It's no more. Ashok is already in. Noemi goes. Yes, Noemi is in. Yeah, so as they can see that uh, we are scanning our eyes for the access to the experimental cavern. So the point is, you know, our own eyes will be scanned and, you know, there is a procedure which we have to go through to access the experimental uh, cavern. So right now, Noami is being, right now you can see in the camera, uh, the access uh, the system where you your eyes are being scanned and, you know, you are we're going into the, into the uh, accelerator, escalator where, we will go deep into, you know, roughly uh, say 90 meters or so into the into the underground. So here is the big Where lift. Ashok right now, B have... is, is exactly 97 below the ground. Um, yeah, exactly to minus three. Uh, we are going to lose him, so that's why I'm, I'm I I took the took the voice. Of course, as the elevator goes down, very probably the the uh, reception is lost. Actually, we are a little bit strange in that on the way down, we lose the, the connection on the way up, we don't. Uh, this has a technical reason because uh, on, on underground, the, the network provider is Swiss. Uh, on the surface, the network provider is, is France or French. And the roaming between them is not symmetric, but that's okay. You see now they turn to the to the Swiss network, and you see how the the elevator uh, display counts. Okay. Uh, so they go really underground, and from then uh, they will take a, a little walk. Let me just see. Let me just try to show you. Yeah, exactly this thing. So this is the the underground, the map of the underground zone. And they go down. This is a vertical shaft. So this is something, this map, as, as if you would see it from looking down. Uh, they arrive here in the, uh, they go down in this vertical shaft called PM54. And from here, in this uh, hedged uh, uh, little tunnel, they will enter in the, the, the experimental cavern. Ashok, the word is yours. Okay, if they can hear me, then we have to, yes. you know, uh, access the uh, experimental cavern using the other eye scan with the, another key in hand. And now I'm going, I'm doing my eye scanning here. Please note the so, color of this uh, this pad, this booth. Uh, it is it is uh, not a, an arbitrary color. The previous one on the surface, you might recall, it was green. This is now yellow, and probably on this journey today, we are going to show you red doors as well. There is a significant difference between the, 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 the colors. The green door is a simple door. It means that if uh, you would force the door out, nothing would happen indeed, of course, behind the, the alarms. But the yellow and the red are so-called interlocked doors, and they are in a hard connection with the accelerator itself. If you would break in, I don't tell you how, you would figure out if you would need to 
to to to know it. Anyway, uh, if you would break it, you would immediately shut down the 27 kilometers of the accelerator. So this is a, a very basic safety measure in order to prevent persons to meet these very high energy proton beams. That's a, that's a very important safety part. Ashok? Yes, so now we are in the very exciting part of the tunnel. We are inside the tunnel and now you can see that my voice may echo as well. So I will go through. So you, this is the tunnel. Now we are going through the through the different uh, sections of the tunnel. And you can see that there is a ventilation system and there is a services for the common plumbing services go, going through these pipes. And now we are going to the cavern. And now you will see the CMS experiment. CMS experiment will be the one of the biggest experiment being conducted for... for uh, finding out the fundamental physics, actually, the fundamental particles like the Higgs boson we have discovered. Now, since you know that proton-proton collisions will give you a lot of radiation, so these doors are very, very heavy to protect this part from the inner part where the radiation is uh, very, very high. And also now, they are fireproof. Yeah, and now you they can see the fireproof. CMS experiment. Now you can see the magnet system there is a beam which is going into the experiment. You can see that this experiment is very, very tall. Uh, it is roughly 15 to 16 meter high, and the length of the experiment we will walk through will be roughly uh, 22, 23 meter. Now this, you can see the red part. The red part is the, the, the iron metal part, where, you know, if you have a solenoidal magnet, if you have read about the magnets and the magnets which are being created out of the the superconducting coils or electromagnetic principle, this this kind of metal, which is ferromagnetic in the nature, helps us to you know create or uh, give us the return field into the experiment. In total, we have a magnet field of magnetic field of uh, four tesla here, and with this yoke, you can get the return field back to you know uh, coil the particles and try to discover them through their signatures in the uh, in the different subsystems. So this is the main part. You can see the beam coming here. So you can feel a very thin beam coming through this. This is the large hadron collider, which is reading, uh, which is reading, re reaching at 0.5. So th this is 0.5, where the experiment is being stalled. But this LSC, you know, the LSC, large hadron collider, is giving us a beam here. So the, inside it, you have the beam pipe. Since right now, the experiment is working, so we have not opened the, the different parts of the detector. So detector itself is a completely composed of uh, different subsystems. Okay, now you see, uh, can I feel the magnetic field here as well? Okay, let me see if I can, uh, I can feel the, for example, we have some uh, ferromagnetic or uh, metallic uh, uh, pins and we can see, we can see that magnetic field is on. And you know, if you, if you, on the surface, they will work. Oh, magnet is off. So you, so this means they cannot fail. Okay. Well, there are there are some possibilities to show ah, okay. exactly. Okay. okay. So they can see the the pins standing in the orientation where the field will be. You know, uh, field lines will be there. So the field lines they will try to orient uh, orient themselves in the direction where. A magnetic field lines are being uh, being being uh, uh, oriented. So see, after even if the magnet is off right now, uh, the the residual magnetic field itself is giving us the the behavior. You know, you can see the behavior of this uh, metallic pins in the presence of no magnetic field, but the residual magnetic field in the in the steel uh, yoke. Okay. Now you can see, yeah, huh? this is without, and I can take the parts also. These are different parts. Okay, these are being here. <laughs> this is interesting, actually. Okay, now you see, we have the, you know, you have seen the experiment, but below the experiment, you can see different wires. So these wires are, say, low voltage, high voltage. So all these electrical connections from the service cavern to the experimental cavern are done through these cables. You have to, uh, you know, these detectors work majorly on the on the principle of ionization principle as well as on the principle of scintillation to operate these detectors we need low voltage high voltage 
and also the electronics like the electronics you use in the in the cpus of the computer and you have to cool in the cpus you have the the fan which cools down the electronics here you may require a water connection or you may require the the you know uh, the co2 carbon dioxide cooling in different inner parts of the detectors which are made up of silicon uh, sensors so the point is all these services which are needing for the cooling for the powering and also for the gases detector the gases are coming from the surface or intermediate levels of the cavern through these cables the cables you are seeing here also you can see the ethernet cables here these ethernet cables transmit the information the data the readout channels from the experiment to the to the upper uh, part of the experiment now if we walk through this experiment you can see you can imagine the height of this experiment as i am 5 feet 6 inch you can imagine what is the height of this full experiment and also you can see the foot of the different rings so in the in the cms you have different parts of the cms different parts of the uh, cms are divided and you can see you know you can see the light through this experiment this means these two parts are totally different actually but they are being integrated when we open the detector they are separate but right now since the detector is closed so they are you know separated by say roughly uh, 10 uh, say uh, 60 or 70 uh, centimeter or so also you can see the foot of the of the of the experiment you know whenever we have to uh, move these parts you can move on the surface and you use a very very high machines high hydraulic uh, mechanical machines to move these parts and uh, that is also another technology a spin off where you can really imagine to move these big structures total weight of the cms experiment is roughly 13000 ton actually so this means these several tons of the parts you can me you can move using the mechanical machines and the machines which are made uh, by the very very intelligent engineers all around the world also whatever information you are seeing here is also constructed in the katia model autocad model whatever services you see if you see this routing here this routing here this is also designed in the services first so if you have to make a boeing or air airbus plane you have to design services in some autocad models same thing has happened here otherwise there will be much more complexity and we will be not you know uh, fitting uh, rightly in the in the experiment so whatever is being done here is properly designed in autocad models and also thought in a well manner so that we fit all the, uh, the things in a in a nice and eff efficient efficient way so that performance of detector is not affected and the discovery of the new particle should happen efficiently also now you can see that the 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 structure here also you have two different disks you can see the structure is you know the structure is round in shape so you can say the shape is already happening in in, in a round shape there are roughly say in this region you have say uh, 12 band cap sectors so you can see that one sector is roughly 60 degree and you have a 360 degree detector but you can see you can feel the orientation of the disc going in the in the circular manner but uh, you know roughly with the 60 degree cone from the center now now we move to the uh, to the other side of the detector you can see that we are walking through the experiment and in this uh, walkway we have reached the other part of the uh, other side of the detector again you can see on the top this is called the you know one of the hcal detector we have uh, here and this red part is the shielding we are getting a lot of uh, radiation so when we collide protons and protons you get new particles but you get a lot of uh, gammas betas uh, x rays so a lot of radiation is coming right now also there is a lot of radiation in this cavern so we have a dosimeter which is already measuring the level of the radiation and also we are prohibited not to be here for a very long so in a few minutes we will exit this is the radiation this as you know the students are of a very you know eighth or ninth class so you can understand when you go to x-ray machine you expose yourself for a few microseconds but here you are exposing for a long uh, duration and so this means when we work in this experimental cavern to to maintain the detector when the detector is being accessed by us so we have a limit of the radiation to work here and these limits come from the international rules and international radiation iepa uh, govern these kind of a limits 
So this means whenever you people in future will work, they have to pass through these courses and understand the effects of gamma, X-rays, or beta on the body. So now you can see that the, uh, this uh, shielding is put to safeguard also the, the radiation, the, the overall radiation of the experiment, and also the inner elements. This radiation can kill this, you know, that has a very, a very strong effect on the services we have seen, the cooling, power, and other components. And also inside the experiment, you have a silicon sensors, you have a scintillation detector, you have a gaseous detector. The effect of radiation is so high that two years from now, we will be changing many parts of the detector. We constructed the experiment during 2001 to 2006, 2007, and all those elements are working till date. But now in the, in the, in the next section of the LSC, which we call high Lumi LSC, which will start in 2030, we will be stopping this experiment opening the different parts of the detector, and we will be constructing a new parts of the detector or changing or maintaining the new parts of the detector. This means the radiation is so high that it can damage the electronic, it can damage the detector elements, and it can damage the services, the powering services, or the, the other services which are coming here. And we have to change many of them. So these days, we all are working to put or to make the parts uh, in the in the next uh, uh, long shutdown three. So again, you can see the height of the detector. You can see the different uh, pathways in the in the side to access different parts of the the racks. You can see the green or this blue racks. We, these blue racks are mostly the low voltage powering racks. Why we need to place the low voltage as near to the detector because you do not want to waste the power if you are not close to the detector. High voltage is, is in the service cavern, but low voltage you want to keep as low as possible. If you see your uh, phone or uh, CPUs in the computers, the low voltage units are very, very close because these are DCs and also you do not want to uh, lose the power. The voltage is say roughly 8 volts or 7 volts and the current is also in few uh, amperes. And if you will make long cables to access the detector, then you will uh, lose the power. Also, uh, this is one part of the detector, what you can say, the near side of the detector. There is a far side of the detector. Right now, we are in the negative. So if you, if the center of detector is zero, origin is zero. So we are in the negative side of the, of the cavern. There is a positive side of the cavern. So you can divide uh, like a Cartesian coordinates. That you have a right, you have a negative side, positive side, and then also, uh, to place a detector, you have a near side. We are sitting, we are standing in the near side. There is another side. We call it as a far side. So these are the geographical locations to understand the different locations of the of the system, uh, subsystems. Uh, okay. Now you can see that these uh, irons, which are standing here since uh, many many years, these big structures were assembled on the surface and through this well. Can you see the well here? Well-like structure. You know, it is closed from the top right now, but you can feel that it is uh, normally open during the maintenance period. So we have loaded this heavy, heavy disc through this uh, passage. Now you can think of, you know, several tons of this weight is being loaded using a hydraulic or uh, mechanical machine, and not only one, but many structures. And these structures were containing very, very high priced uh, detector elements. So there was a big risk of falling or uh, damaging these structures, but still the accuracy and the precision of this, these machines is so high that we could not afford a single incident of falling or damaging these uh, systems. So you can see these well-like structures and uh, in, the, in the next uh, three, four years, we will be taking uh, out few disks again and you know passing the elements through this, uh, through this well structure. We call this as the uh, shaft of the experiment where we can uh, lower down heavy structures. Okay, what else we can show them? We can show them the thick uh, services. You can see that, okay, again, you can see uh, the, the bottom of the experiment. You can see the services which are coming from the, from the top to the bottom. For example, these high voltage cables, very, very thick. Why these are very, very thick? Because you have to route them in different um, tunnel-like structures, small tunnel-like structures, and then they, they are they are carrying say 
few kilo volts of uh, voltage as well as, as well as they can lose the current so these are very very high um, uh, high uh, you know uh, technology uh, technology used here to to maintain to maintain the structure as well as maintain the performance of these cables to bring down very high voltage and the the, the current we need these are the cooling uh, pipes the copper and uh, copper pipes here which are bringing mostly uh, say co2 or water or uh, other cooling services to the to the experiment also we have actually they can see the the bottom of the experiment as well we have this x0 level so right now we are standing at the x1 level x1 level is the uh, level where the experiment is being situated but you can see the bottom of the experiment as well this is called x0 level so x0 level also have you know x0 level is mostly receiving the services from the surface and then distributing these services to the to the x1 level to the racks and then to, to the experiment now you can also see here they can see this uh, this uh, these structures these structures are very very heavy and they help these pads help to move the different discs you can see the pads i don't know how much clear it is but you can see these pads yes exactly this orange color right now you are seeing are the pads they can move the disc they can separate this disc very easily and uh, everything is done mechanically and uh, so these pads helps us to move this uh, tons of disc and uh, separate out the uh, subsystems yeah and open the all the part we have uh, five uh, rings five five wheels in the central part called barrel and we have you know three on the other uh, left side or a near uh, negative side and the positive side we have three another so in roughly we have 11 uh, discs to move uh, to open the experiment completely okay yes i think uh, so oh, we can show that part oh okay okay so now we are moving to x1 x, uh, sorry x2 x3 x4 level where we can show other uh, uh, services as well so they can always see the cms from different angles so right now you can see the cms experiment again but from the x2 level level 1 actually but we call it as x2 level and now you can see you know these uh, cooling stations you know you can see here the sound as well most of the sound is coming from this these racks and these uh, structures you can we have see a very the... good noise cancellation microphone they don't hear any noise <laughs> oh they are not able to hear or they can hear okay oh no, they can't okay. they can't oh they can't but anyway so now you can um, normally you can show what is inside the racks actually you can see the ethernet connection you can see the uh, dc uh, converters ac to dc converters you can see the patch panels for the low voltage you can see the low voltage of the uh, low voltage cables you can see the low voltage boards uh, you can see the other subsystems where you know you have the uh, fiber readout uh, fiber signal readout patch panels here so again you have the powering services low voltage powering services you have the bus connections between the uh, you know transmitting the information between the two uh, parts of the equipment and then you have other uh, parts so this kind of uh, you know uh, racks gives us the low voltage service you have the fibers here lot of fibers which are being you know taking out the signal readout from the from the uh, yeah yeah right, this is dt okay drift tubes so drift tubes are one of the muon systems we have so you can see the uh, low voltage racks here which are supporting the the low voltage requirements of the subsystems again the near side of the detector again you can see also you can see what is the height you can also see this crane the yellow part this is the crane which helps us to move very heavy elements inside the cabin so this yellow this yellow one and you can see in french arrier droit gauche avant if you want to understand these words Asana is sitting, she understand French very well. So this is about right, left, above, uh, below, and so on. And also, if you see this, uh, these parts carefully, do you have the four yellow, uh, you know, uh, platforms? 
which are holding the the hf we call it as the h forward h scale of the uh, cms experiment so these uh, yellow parts you can take them one by one uh, from the bottom and you can uh, lower down the h scale uh, forward h scale uh, uh, to the surface and it can go to the uh, to the storage area in the in the left side so we we want to go up or no okay 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 that's nice so we can see the detector from the top as well so let us uh, go on top okay you can see the detector here then i would be interested to show from the top actually okay very nice so you can uh, well by the way you are very lucky that you are able to see this experiment because for the technical uh, shutdown too the cavern is open today and that's why this date is fixed uh, okay this part yeah this is or this one, uh, this Asha, one please don't forget to please don't forget to mention the dimensions so this yeah, so beast this red beast in the middle is something like 16 meters high it's something like a four story building uh, yeah. its length is something like a 20 meter more or less and its weight is what is really counts this weight is the 14 and a half thousand tons this is twice of that of the eiffel tower this yeah. is really a heavy beast and the heaviness is given by the the iron that we use to as you said uh, uh to to encapsulate to close the field lines of the enormous magnet that we have inside I, uh, in the meantime, I showed uh, uh, the the uh, sketch of the experiment, and I uh, probably I showed as well the the big magnet. We call it solenoid because its uh, geometry is like that. That creates something like one hundred thousand times stronger magnetic field than that of the Earth magnetic field. Uh, what you saw today at the feet of the detector. Is the so-called remanent field the magnet is off but the but the the iron that this red stuff over there the iron can uh, can remember a little bit the magnetic field this is called remanent field this is not very strong especially not at the place where, where ashok uh, uh, demonstrated but it is there so for example on that place what ashok showed that's uh, naturally a very good place to put your computer down when you do when you are doing some hardware work in the detector and it would it is so good that from there it's a very convenient place you could you could do your job no you can't uh my computer uh, uh senses or or feels that the lid is closed with a magnetic sensor so it immediately uh, thinks that i closed it so I cannot use my my computer, for example, from there. That's a pity. Okay, Ashok, I give you back the word. So again, from the top, they can see the this orange structure, the big uh, uh, magnets, and inside these uh, orange structures, the beam of the proton always comes, and the beam goes to the center. And there are two beam lines, so they try to collide. We try to collide the protons like this. So there is a beam coming in this direction. There is another beam coming in this direction, and they collide at the and the interaction point we call as the IP in the center of the detector. The new particles are created, and these new particles decay immediately. The decay remnants are being captured by these detector systems, which is inside the CMS, and these uh, subsystems gives us the hints of a new physics or a new particles we have found. Right now, you can see that we are at the at the very high level, and you can see that. There are still some, some uh, you know, uh, as, uh, tilted towers supporting the services of the detector system. This detector system, which in you know, a full CMS detector, which you are seeing right now, you can see the full, full wall also, the full roof also on the top also. So full roof and this part and you know, everything. This is a very, very compact detector. But that's why we call it as a compact muon solenoid. Since we are using solenoid here, Three Tesla magnetic field is created by the solenoidal magnetic field. What is the solenoid? Inside the solenoid, you have the four, four Tesla, but outside the solenoid, you have the half the magnetic field. That is the principle of the 
solenoid. This um, magnet is, uh, uh, you know, manufactured using the superconducting technology. And you know that superconducting technology gives us the electrical uh, wires which have no resistance. And to have this uh, metallic no resistance wires, we have to cool down the, the, the metallic systems or the wires, niobium or a niobium mixed with some other titanium or other structures. So this cooling has to be, say, at uh, 0 Kelvin or uh, 2 Kelvin or uh, 3 Kelvin. And how do we cool them? Using the helium, liquid helium. So this kind of a structure, which is giving you a 4 Tesla magnetic field, just imagine we do the MRI, magnetic resonance imaging in, in, the, in Delhi uh, city labs. It is around 2 Tesla or so. And it is double the magnetic field here. So inside the 2 Tesla magnetic field, we can image the, the different organs of the or issues or tissues of the body. Here we are trying to image or capture the images of the particles, the new particles which decay immediately. If they would not have decayed, this we could have captured them and try to you know see the state for a long. And we do not have imagined to create the collisions always. But since they they are created and decay immediately, they have a short half life time. They create they decay immediately. We have to capture these uh, decays in in a camera like structure. So this is a camera like structure which gets the images of the decays every few seconds, every 25 nanoseconds, actually. The collisions are happening here every 25 nanoseconds. You have to be fast. You have to be radiation tolerant. Whatever we are putting here has to be radiation tolerant. This means radiation effect should be less damaging to the structure. Second thing, we, we should give the image of the decay. So the imaging can happen when you have a very, very high resolution in space and the timing. Then comes the timing as well, 25 nanoseconds. We are in nanoseconds. This means the capturing of these images has to be very, very fast. So all these fast electronics, fast detectors, radiation tolerant detectors, radiation tolerant electronics is needed to make the, the CMS-like experiment. That's why B physicists, the experimental high energy physicist or experimental nuclear physicist have to invest a lot of time to find out the devices which are very high in timing and also a radiation tolerance uh, in the in the, uh, for the for the CMS. So any any other information we can share here, Jolton? I think now we are fine. I would I would ask for the questions. Okay, so we move uh, to the surface. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, wait wait a little there. Uh, yeah. If we if we get a question that is related to the to the underground zone. So I would, yeah. I would uh, like to encourage our guests to ask the questions. It's your time. And they can type as well, right? They can type as well, but they can talk without any problem. Rashima, no, we can... don't hear yes, you. Yes, yeah. uh, yes, sir. We have Shivi who wants to ask you a question. Get up, Shivi. Talk to sir. Be loud. How we can make a particle stand at almost the speed of light? Yes, yeah, so, I'm afraid I didn't understand. So yeah, Ashok, did you? Yeah, I, if I understood well, how do we make the particles to the speed of light? So the point is speed of see the accelerator you have seen here, and you try to accelerate the particle at very very high energy. Uh, if you remember, uh, the speed is, you know, a distance and um, uh, you have a time and a distance. So distance you you and concur in a spiral um, or in circular path is very, very high. And uh, you have the time here. Now, proton is a very, very uh, small particle. It is heavier than, uh, than electron. So this means the electron can reach the speed of light easily, near to the speed of light, but less. The proton cannot do that much. But it can reach the speed of light, but not as good as the electron. So when you pass these protons, charged particle through the electromagnetic field, electric field will give you the energy, which raises up its its uh, its uh, speed, and uh, magnetic field will bend in the in the in the circular path. So this means the energy which is given to the proton is the real kinetic energy they gain. So kinetic energy we can give to this very tiny particle, and this kinetic energy reflect reflects to be near to the speed of light. It is not a speed of light. Speed of light can only be achieved by photons. 
the the light we are getting from the sun for example but here we have the massive particle 1 gb particle the mass of the photon is zero gravitational mass is very 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 you know uh, hypothetically also is a 10 minus 24 uh, gb or so so right now you can accelerate protons through electromagnetic field many many times you kick the elect uh, protons many many times and you can reach close to the speed of light but not speed of light so that is the answer wait uh, yeah okay who uh, wants to ask there is there are two mics open i guess yeah uh, yeah, I just wanted to add. No, no, it's okay. It's working. Yeah. Ask the question. No, uh, how do you know the particle is not? Uh, is actually intact. It's not converting into any energy. Particles. Can you repeat the question, please? Be, be repeat close the to the question. mic. Are you there? Madam, you can also repeat the question oh, because yeah, we can hear you very well. Has, uh, Stay if you could just get closer to the microphone, it would be, I think we would, no, the microphone is at the computer. Not gathering everything. Okay, how do you measure that it stays together? No, we cannot hear you very well. Madam, we can hear you. Can you repeat the question? Come here and speak the question. Be loud. Yes. Yeah, please, please, don't worry. Sir, are we audible to you? Madam, you are totally audible, but students are not audible. They should yes. speak to the mic you are speaking. Yes, yeah, speak loud. Uh, good morning, sir. So, uh, I just wanted to ask that, uh, the, how do you know the particle is intact? It's uh, together. It doesn't scatter. And how do you measure that? Okay. So we can control the trajectory of the particles by applying a very strong magnetic field. That's why we have applied the magnetic field here. The new particles are created at the IP, interaction point where proton-proton collide. And then these particles decays immediately. So we have to reconstruct these decays to know the nature of this particle. Which particle, what is the mass of this particle, what is the charge of this particle, what is the spin of this particle, and so on. So the mag this decays of these particles goes through magnetic field and magnetic field is very precise we have a very good map of the magnetic field uh, simulation wise as well and also the real magnetic field map is very very nice in fact jolta and noami are already giving us a very good calibration of the magnetic field we have inside the cavern so this means we can locate the trajectory of the particles easily so that's why magnetic field helps us to know the trajectories and the locations of these particles I hope they can understand your bit. Thank you, sir. Other... Yeah, we can go to service cavern or... Uh... Okay. Arnav wants to ask you a question, sir. Please, please go ahead. I can stand there some, somewhere. Sir, you mentioned quarks. So, uh, what, what are they exactly? Uh, what role do they play in this? Okay, so the quarks are the particles which are making the, the protons and neutrons. So like we know that we are made up of protons and neutrons, so it is a similar thing. The protons are made up of quarks and uh, uh, two types of quark, up and down quarks. So quarks are the particles which are the building blocks of everything actually, you see around. So if you take uh, the quarks and the electrons, so these particles are the real uh, fundamental particles. Earlier we came, we were knowing in your textbook it is written protons, neutrons, and electrons make up the matter, make up the ma atom of the every element. And then you can say that okay, everything is made up of these three particles. But now you have to say that quarks and the electrons are the particles which are making the atoms. Now you also need a, need electric field. You know that in the in atom is bounded by the electric field. So this means you need a field. Also, this field is being transmitted by intermediate particles. So this means you need a interaction, a field to, to, to make these particles. Quarks are interacting through strong field or a nuclear field to make up protons and the neutrons. And the proton neutrons itself make the nucleus through the strong field. And this strong nucleus force, uh, nucleus and also the electrons which are orbiting around the atom, atomic uh, levels, these are bonded by electric field. 
coulomb's force coulomb's field so this means coulomb's field is giving you electron and proton neutron to stay together and proton neutrons which are having a quarks are being strongly interacting through the uh, exchange of uh, gluons but quarks are the building blocks of the matter electrons plus quarks are the real uh, building blocks of the atoms and the 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 visible matter we see around us so you can think earlier protons neutrons were the fundamental particles now quarks are the real fundamental particle along with the electrons in the universe they will they will not you know make a difference because the visible matter the matter around us whatever we see is known to very accuracy this means quarks which are building blocks of the matter are known to very much uh, precision and also the matter we see is also known to the precision except the dark matter and dark energy which is beyond the realm of today's discussion again you can see that the starting point where we started the 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 you know experimental uh, site visit is uh, still there and you can you can feel you can feel the 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 dimensions the the integrity of the experiment you can see that you know all these small elements which are built and used in these experiments are very very technologically advanced and also uh most of them are a radiation tolerant to stay for many many years under very very high intense uh, magnetic field high very 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 high radiation uh field and also uh they are uh, mechanically uh electronically or electrically are uh, very very you know um, um, very very advanced so that they can stay with a very very high precision for a long okay you can see up there is a small passage actually yeah there is a small passage to access one of the rack here so you know normally to this rack of the hf actually uh we can see the far side of the experiment as well you can see ye4 sector okay they can read the ye4 sector so this is yolk and cap 4 now you can see sector minus 9 or plus 11 okay minus 9 is other side plus 11 on this side so this see the you this sectorization is being done one sector is 60 degree you have 12 sectors 12 into 60 you have uh you have a uh, you can see that why e4 sector right now you are seeing the iron part also but on the other side you have the detector part so this mean detectors are inside this you know other side of the the iron you every sector is 30 degree sorry not 60 degree but 30 degree okay okay now we can we can move to the service cabin how much time we have joltan you may continue if you we, want we 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 still have we still have plenty of time i would say so i would i would uh, uh, encourage to continue the questions and answer session uh, okay. i just just keep silent here i think ashok my colleague is 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 so good in that that uh, i would let him to to Increase answer the, the questions by stand by go ahead sorry question uh, just a minute sir we have um, kanav uh, who would uh, like to ask you a question now so kanav be loud sir how will your experiment change how we see the world and what changes will be brought to the field of physics so for example roughly 120 130 year ago electron was discovered and at that time when jj thomson discovered electron nobody was knowing what is going to be the future of this particle but now after so many decades we know that the electronics we use the mobile phone the laptop the communication we are doing you know lot of these things are happening because of the electronics we use and electronics comes from the electron or the charge we we have so right now we cannot say there is a direct application of the higgs particle we have discovered in 2012 but who knows you guys can create a new technology out of anything now i come to the basic question when we build these accelerators these accelerators are also used to you know image the cancerous tissues and also the treat uh, the cancerous tissues all these technologies has come from the accelerator physics we use at cern also the world wide web 
the world wide web the you you use you all all world is using has been invented in 1989 by tim berners lee and it was at that time it was thought to be used by experiment like us to be communicating between the different uh, computer systems but right after 92 93 it is so commonly used all around the world that we you and me are communicating using this uh, uh, world wide web there is another application the the electronics uh, imaging we use right now there are so many i have tips one and... thing I, uh, ashok yeah. uh, if i can interrupt i i cannot stand but i i also have another example and this example is something much closer in time than the electrons and the Greeks and, you know, the fur of the cat and whatever that uh, people played with uh, for several centuries. But indeed, you surely heard about the theory of relativity and especially you heard about the general relativity, the theory of the general or general uh, theory of the relativity that tells that the the mass of the what you see here and and the gravity that they make is is distorting the space time you know you, you all these science fiction things you heard about this you can imagine that this is really a theoretical thing you might imagine you know that this was discovered by albert einstein at the beginning of the previous century and this is really a theoretical thing that has nothing common with the normal real life of the people. Now it is wrong. We have, we are using this theory and we know that it is true. We use it in our GPS systems, for example, to keep the GPS systems so accurate as you can use them from your mobile phone and you can, you can uh, navigate to your grandma. That's, that's uh, based on the general relativity. And that's something that, that describes that what we are doing now, we don't know what it is good for, for the everyday life, but it might happen even within a century that, that this can be, this can be, we find something really useful for the everyday life. Don't forget when the general relativity was described first, as I said, at the beginning of the previous century, it has no practical use at all. And now we are, we can't live without. So thank you, Ashok. Sorry for interrupting. I, I love this example. This, no, this is a very good example. Also, the right now you, you all know that we are going to cloud computing or a cluster computing, grid computing and so on. You know, we are the, the I think number one users of these kind of technologies. We initiated worldwide grids actually uh, and then we we in India also have a center in Mumbai and now it is coming up in Calcutta where we are transmitting, we are taking a data, a lot of data from here and transmitting through the fiber optics to the different centers all over the world. In Mumbai also, Tata Institute, we have one of the centers. So this means we are integrated in a common platform. We are integrated in a very large structures which are working for a one common goal and we are very, very fast, redundant and reliable. So all these kind of technology, when we use, we wish to use for a space explorations, the detector we use, for example, here for gamma or X-ray or electrons or charged particle tracking are also the similar detector we use for the space explorations. Right now, we are talking about the matter, which is only 5% of the universe. In the universe, we have dark matter and dark energy as well. To explore and know the details of these uh, structures or particles, by nature of these uh, structures, particles they are built of, you know, we have to uh, go through and advance such kind of a technologies. Also, the chips, you know, if you are sending something to, to space and you have to see that how many years or decades it can stay there. So you, this has to be, uh, you know, uh, radiation tolerant with respect to gammas they are getting or X-rays they are getting or cosmic muons they are getting. So right now we we are already using the electronics which is uh, radiation tolerant for gammas, X-rays, beta particles, and alpha, so on. So this means the especially the electronics which gets affected by the radiation very fastly. So they are being you know these are these are the real experiment which are giving the advancement of such a knowledge for the humankind. Now let us go to the textbooks. The textbooks you read, 
you have read electrons, protons, neutrons, Dalton model, Rutherford model, and so on. Now you will be reading about the LSC as well, the standard model of the particle physics, the, the standard model of the, of the space as well. All these ingredients are coming from these kind of uh, experiments. I have just given you an example of Higgs particles, but there are so many things we are doing to explore the strong nature of the strong field, the electromagnetic nature of the electromagnetic force. And in a way, we are also trying to unify them. Electromagnetic, you know that, you know, uh, Maxwell tried to unify electromagnetic and magnetic field into one, which is called electromagnetic field now. Then our scientists try to unify electromagnetic and weak, which is called electroweak uh, force now. Then standard models say that electroweak plus strong force can also be unified in, in some sense. So this means in coming decades, Maybe you, young people, can lead to unify gravitational wave into the standard model of the particle physics. All these unification lead to simplicity, triviality, and also the understanding of the fundamental nature of the, of the physics. And that is also Anyone? another unification. And that is also another unification that I, I do want to mention here. And this is, of course, this doesn't come from physics. This comes from the fact that these are so big efforts around here that cannot be made by few people, few in institutions or few nations. This is something that unites the people from everywhere on the earth. You know, Ashok is from India. I'm from Europe. And we have colleagues from, from, from Americas, from other continents, and we all work together. On this experiment, for example, we work around 5,000 people to make it working. Some of them are designing parts of this. Some of them are creating uh, detector components. Some of them are operating. Some of them are evaluating the physics results. And we all work together from every corner of the, the planet to make this happening and to make this successful. This unification, I think, is at least as important as the physics unifications, as Ashok told about in the just a minute ago. Thank you. Sorry for again interrupting. Any other question we have? Uh, yes, sir. We have um, more children. We have more children who would like to ask you a question. So we have Sonakshi. She'll be asking you a question now. Good afternoon, sir. I have heard that in an atomic bomb, there is a reaction uh, in uranium, uranium, and the particles of uranium, they collide together, and they create a lot of energy. Okay, so I was just wondering, in this CMS experiment, there are also particles colliding with each other. What happens to the energy, to the massive energy which is created during this experiment? So... And the energy we are talking about, if I understand well, I, I will try to figure out, you know, what you want to understand here. So the energy we are talking about is a very, very tiny, tiny energy when we talk about our calories and joules. But at the scale, micro coffee scale, we are talking what is very, very high energy. So these energies create the, the new particles. As Joel Tan was explaining, E is equal to mc square Einstein's equation, where energy can be converted into mass and mass can be converted into energy. Proton, protons were massive. When they collided at very, very high kinetic energies, they give us a new particle. So mass is converted into energy. And this energy creates another mass called Higgs particle and other particles as well. And these particles again decay to energy. And these energies are kinetic energies which are being captured by the experiment. Now, these energies are being measured by the calorimeters of the experiment. The particles are being reconstructed in their mass. We call them as using the Lorentz variables. As Jolten was explaining, we are the number one users of the GTR and uh, uh, you know relativity in detail. So the point is, all these energies give us the new particles. Now, the scale to create nuclear reactors or a nuclear, uh, 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 nuclear applications can come out if you want to do the the heavy ion collisions or very heavy, uh, very heavy uh, nuclei uh, application. We are not doing it. CERN is made for a science for peace. This was made after World War II to do the science for peace. We are doing science for peace. In fact, the technologies 
which we are using uh, has come from the advancement of all these nuclear applications. But at CERN, the motto is to do the science for the fundamental physics. There are laboratories in the world. We have been in, uh, in, uh, in India, DA units, Department of Atomic Energy, where we are creating a lot of nuclear reactors, nuclear electricity out of these reactors, and also some other applications. Right now, in fundamental physics, we talk about the fundamental particle discoveries and the nature of the forces we see around us. So right now, the stay, the, the main stay at CERN is to speak about the fundamental science for peace. That's why that the people from all over the world, from Russia, from England, from US, from Africa, from Asia, they are collaborating for the peaceful purpose. There is no uh, harmful nuclear application we try to invite at CERN. I just let me just just tell the 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 extents the numbers. So while in a nuclear bomb, for example, as far as I understood that this this phrase was spoken out in a nuclear bomb, quite a many uh, 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 nuclei are 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 concerned in the the explosion. This quite a many is in the range of the Avogadro number that you surely heard about, that how many how many particles, how many atoms are in, let's say, in one gram of he hydrogen, which is one gram is not too much, but you have uh, six times 10 to the 23 atoms there. Instead, in our case, we collide one plus one proton, or a couple of protons collide during one bunch crossing, that's a technicality, but the the energy that is released, apart from the fact, but that the nuclear bomb works completely differently than these uh, nuclear reactions. But what we can say that that the main difference is the amount of particles concerned in this in the the nuclear power plant or nuclear bomb and the particle accelerators, and therefore. The energy that is created here on on the inset, I'm I'm uh, I'm showing you the detection how the detector makes the detection as well, but um, the the this difference is really the energy that is released. In our case, the the released energy is something like close to the close to the energy that a butterfly makes when releases when it flies. You know, so this is completely nothing in the the normal way. Uh, we have nothing common with these uh, ugly stuff like the nuclear bombs. And that's very important to know. Thank you. Do we have, we have more questions? Yes, sir. We have Shambhavi who would like to ask you a question. Good morning, sir. Sir, given the immense scale of CMS experiment and the complexity of data, how do you foresee the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning? Uh, evolving in future particle physics theory, especially in finding new patterns and making new discoveries. Yeah. So, uh, actually, CERN is leading the work, uh, the work on machine learning and artificial intelligence. In fact, the CERN has a very strong collaboration with all the leading, uh, uh, you know, teams, uh, which are working for the good applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now, I will give you an example right now. For example, you know, we are taking then proton-proton collide. Lot of particles are being created. Lot of information is there. We want to select that information. The selection of the information is done by level one trigger. So what we call them as the selection of this particular event. This particular events have some steps, some energy deposits, some tracking information, some bending information. So we have all the information. Depending upon all these information, we can try to make the machine learning, machine learning algorithm to uh, select the, the signals, the signals which we want, the signals of interest, the physics of the interest. Selection of these physics signals is done using, you know, can be done using machine learning. And we have we are trying some algorithms in the computers programs here. Try to be more efficient. Our signal to background ratio should be much more uh, above than what we, we are doing right now. So that's why machine learning 
then it capture the different images it can select immediately the image which we desire so in fact machine learning is one of the leading subject at cern and uh, that's why the machine learning we use uh, we we are going to use in further upcoming years is going to be the crucial computing algorithm for us now i come to the artificial intelligence right now we are in the radiation area we can stay here for a small interval of time but in this strong radiation area than the beam right now there is no beam right now so if there is a beam lot of radiation is there lot of magnetic field is there now if you want to take some information or take a glimpse of the experiment or running of the experiment you can use the robots or you can go through different radiation fields using these robots because robots are artificial so although b at cern are doing a fundamental physics but we are very much into the artificial intelligence as well as the machine learning any other question yeah uh, yes sir we have uh, abhyudai who wants to ask you a question again thank you sir i have another good So I I haven't understood the question very well, but I have heard few terms. And for the for the class nine or class eight students you are in, I let me explain a bit. Everything we do here is according to quantum quantum mechanics. We are not doing anything, you know, which is a trivial mechanics or Newtonian mechanics. We are already advanced, right? For example, we are using space uh, relativity here because whatever information we are getting. has to be calculated simulated accurately in computer algorithms so in we are using uh, quantum mechanics plus relativity and we call them as quantum field theories and so on also uh, the the particles which we we are discovering here all are quantum particles this means they have some quantum numbers associated to describe their phenomenology their characteristics spin is their charge is their uh mass in energy units is there everything comes from quantum mechanics you know for us for me my name my university affiliation my work is my characteristics or my personality but for these particles personality come from the quantum mechanics so this means quantum mechanics is already there now i'll give you an one example you know recent paper we have written in atlas and cms at cern is about quantum entanglement in top and anti top quarks so this means the states can be entangled now according to quantum mechanics you can see my location right now but according to uh, this is a classical mechanics but according to quantum mechanics the states can i can be in different states i can be a particle or i can be a wave similar thing is for electrons higgs particles or top crop quarks they can be exist in many states and these states can also be entangled so recent papers only i think a month ago from cms about top and anti top entanglement based on quantum mechanics so right now i can just summarize there's all these particle collisions particle discoveries and particle signatures in the form of images we are doing is quantum mechanics everything is quantum mechanics we go to the surface because we have less time now huh? then we can uh, i can we can skip the service cavern huh? yeah uh, yeah uh, no. any is there a way to uh... combine the quantum mechanics which mainly applies to the smallest of particles uh, and join it with the uh, relativity special relativity yes That, yes like yes 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 quantum mechanics and relativity is joined when we call about quantum field theories and quantum field theories are the basics of unification of electroweak plus strong interaction which is in the 
this is a standard model of the particle physics and we are in the realm of the standard model of particle physics and beyond that so yes in our calculations our simulations our computer algorithms both are already combined we are talking about something which has been done 30 years ago the advancement after the unification of these two different fields but this is there the the basics of everything is encapsulated in the form we are discovering here actually so this is there we live to the surface in the meanwhile yeah you can keep asking questions i don't know how much signal we have because uh, right now we have the access time is getting over and i uh, would like to ask you a question sir yes i can hear it very well hello sir i would like to ask what are the challenges you face while maintaining the cms detector how much money challenges challenges ah, ah How okay much, how many challenges have you faced by so so we have in the first challenge is that you can see Joltan, me, Noami, who is helping us to move around the cabin with camera. We have invested all our life into this experiment. So you can think of uh, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand scientists which have invested a life. This is the main challenge. You know, we are investing a life into this experiment. In a life, high energy physicists can do a maximum one or a one and a half experiment uh, all through the uh, life term. The challenge is. We need something which should be radiation tolerant. We need something which should be, uh, you know, we need a lot of funding. We need a lot of uh, space. Back home, we need a lot of time to invest with students to Ashok, do please don't studies. forget your key to put back. Ah, yeah, sorry. My mistake, huh? Uh, Becha. Yeah, that's why I mean, but not so, Sorry, come. this was a technical thing. Uh, when they when they went in, they got a key, probably you recognized. And if they don't put back this key in the key cabinet, as uh, as soon as Naomi goes through, she will demonstrate it. If they don't do so, they the the accelerator cannot be started up tomorrow. So that would be yes, exactly. That's what Naomi is showing, and this key should get back to its exact place. Yes, exactly, and. Uh, we can start the accelerator only if all the keys are back all around the LHC. That's a very important safety rule. Okay, Ashok, your your turn. No, no, it's a, it, by the way, it was good that I I I I did a mistake and it was really you know explained very well by you. So you know, the experiment is closed and uh, we have uh, radiation there. We have a uh, a uh, lot of uh, magnetic field. So we we come back to the challenges. So challenges to make this uh, experiment is is a long long uh, uh, you know time it takes to make this experiment. And also uh, we have to invest a lot of money. Countries has to commit a lot of money. Young minds young minds like you have to invest a full life. And then you know traveling a lot uh, and also. Uh, surviving with family is is really very hard. You can see my daughter Rasna is sitting in the uh, along with you, and she has she was out of uh, English uh, curriculum for three years. She was only speaking French and very less uh, understood the mathematics and science. And now she is trying to cope up with you guys in class seven. So these all these are challenges for family, for us, for uh, for uh, for uh, young people who are investing a lot of time. Yes, all these challenges. There are many actually. All are challenges. Huh? Life in experimental uh, high energy physics is all about challenges. Huh? And now we are speaking. We are having a very good communication. We will lose uh, communication in, in between. This is another challenge for our video and audio team to to cover. Maybe up. you maybe, you maybe, maybe you stay connected. Maybe you stay connected. <laughs> Very good, very good. So we are coming to the surface and we will not go to the service cabin because a lot of works are going on. There are a lot of uh, safety measures we have to, you know, do when uh, uh, perform when we try to access these uh, parts. And also we are uh, almost uh, close to the cl close to the end of this session. Any more question? Any burning question, please? Uh, just two more questions from uh, Tashi and Ashna. Tashi, do ask. Good morning, yeah. sir. Good morning. And I wanted to ask the question that, as you mentioned that these detectors have to detect signals at very high speeds. So are there times that you get inaccurate readings or readings of results that you do not desire? And how do you maintain the accuracy of the detector? 
So, uh, yeah, accuracy is already inbuilt in the hardware of the system. So if you buy iPhone 16, 15, you know that this is the system you need, actually. This is the fastest system. This is the reliable system. This is the redundant system you like. So you have to build a system which is more reliable. Now, uh, now I'm passing through, and I will get an exit from the from the from the door. Now I I have to take out the dosimeter reading. Yeah, just just wait a little, Ashok. Uh, let's let's yeah. get uh, Noemi through, and then she will show what you are doing. So now you see, Ashok Kumar has acquired. 0.23 millisieverts of radiation, huh? During when the we past were working, year. Yeah, yeah, past year. So this is also another challenge. We are sacrificing important tissues of our body, you know, uh, to, uh, to get uh, out of it. Uh, huh? Before you scare them, let me tell you that <laughs> there are international standards that, uh, that governs how much radiation an ordinary person can get and we are in the same region, same regime as you are over there. We yes. cannot get more than three millisieverts per year. And yeah. among that, most of that is earthbound radiation that we all get, you and us, from the, from the, the earth crust. Um, apart from this, we, uh, what you saw is 0 0.23, which is a negligible amount even though he is working in in this very weird environment, uh, at least what concerns the the the, the normal life. Let me just uh, add my picture in and remove the the old camera, and then I would open for a shock. He is next to me. He is back. Okay, we are back to that. Uh, yeah, but well, first of all, I I think I have to connect your yes your headset. Yes. Okay. So. Next question, I guess. Yes, uh, sir. So we have Ashna with us who would like to ask us a question. What is the full form of PMS? It's a compact muon solenoid. Compact means it's a it's small. Know, if you compare it to Atlas, the Atlas size is double than that. Me, so, let me show yeah, this it's a small uh, one. This uh, thing. This one. So so we are we are small. You see, there is a human with respect to it. So we are small, we are just 60 meters across. The atlas in every direction is twice as big as we are, but magnetic. the weight and also the magnetic field, magnetic field is... the weight is only half of our weight. Yeah. Um, the, and also the magnetic field, the magnetic field is much more complex in atlas. The reason we are, we are looking for both uh, the same physics, but we are, we are going on different ways and that ensures that if we get to the same result, this result is not an artifact that comes from this extra complex, extra complicated observation method. Uh, that's, a, that's a very important thing. And thanks for the question, because this, this, really, this is really uh, a, a basic of our approach that we really want to do different ways. Actually, we cannot... Uh, we cannot afford more than two, but the two different ways, the two detectors were constructed in, in, uh, by different concepts, different ways of, of, uh, of observation. Actually, uh, there are some detector parts that are working the different way also, but if we finally get to the same result, for example, the mass of the Higgs boson. We both discovered the Higgs boson, but we, we also measured the same mass of the Higgs boson. Then we can be sure that this is true. And then you have a one is compact, another one is muon term. Muon means we are very, very uh, good in muon detection. We have different, both. different, different systems which are you know capturing the muons. So it is a uh, you know very much motivated to have more muon systems in the in the CMS and then solenoid. Solenoid means the magnet. Yeah. The magnet we you are using is solenoidal magnet. So the field is very very high. The center part, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. So uh, this is a very very high magnetic field, 3.8 tesla. So that's why compact muon solenoid. Mm -hmm. So this is the CMS. So why why it is muon? Without going into the 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 details, but I just want to tell you, and this is a takeaway message. Uh, these 
accelerators are colliding protons and the, the muons are something really significant. If we see muons, then we know that something really interesting happened. And the muon detection in these detectors is quite a clean thing. And that's a very important that it is clean. It is much less uh, affected by by uh, some other particles, some misidentification, some some errors that we can make during the during the measurement, and that's why the muon is so much important. By the way, the muon is the the heavier brother of the electron. electron. Uh, okay, madam, I think uh, you may oh, have sorry. to uh, we yes. may have to end the session now. We'll have to yes wind up the meeting now, and I would like to on behalf of all the children, I would like to express our gratitude you've given us such a wonderful opportunity to attend this visit and i'm glad all the children must have made up their minds to attend the thank you very much it was our pleasure to be with you today uh, uh, and i hope that we continue they're very, very excited sir and they really want to say thank you to both of you thank you thank you thank you thank you and have a nice day bye 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 bye, bye sir. Bye, sir. Bye.